Okay, welcome to fractions again, lesson 3.5. In this lesson, we're going to be working with whole numbers and fractions. So, um, students are going to use models. We're going to do a little bit of work with counters here, and then you're going to apply this stuff to the more of a, 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 a logarithmic or symbolic method. You're going to create a logarithm. So, I'm going to start with just what is dividing. Here's a, a short demonstration to show you just what dividing is. Now, you've done this before. It's actually not something that, that's new to you. All right. So we're going to consider the following question. You basically have 20 items, and if you have 20 counters, put them on your desk. And I want you to consider the question 20 divided by 5. Now, there's two ways of looking at, at, division, at dividing. One is to consider what we call sharing things out or putting things in groups. Let's talk about sharing first. First, we're going to do division by sharing. This is giving out equal amounts like sharing candy among friends. So if you think about it, we're going to put 20 things and we're going to share them amongst five people. You have to have five people. There's our five people. There's our 20 counters. So to share them out, you're going to give equal amounts to each person. Since there are four in each group, 20 shared among five people or five uh, groups means that you have four in your answer. So 20 divided by 5 is 4. The other way of looking at it is thinking about um, making groups or grouping. Again, we're going to need our 20 counters. So if you look at the question, you're going to have to make groups of 5. So how many groups of 5 can you make? You take a look here, you notice that I've taken 20 things, and I've divided them into groups of 5. So we end up getting 4 groups, so 20 divided by 5 is 4. How you want to look at dividing, it's up to you. It depends on how you want to view it. But that's the basics of what dividing is. So now let's go back and take a look at what, uh, what we're going to be doing with the fractions. The first page of your lesson is basically just what I did. So you can just read it over if you want. But they're going to go on to the next page and go down to some of the textbook stuff we need. We could also divide fractions. Besides grouping, we can use number lines. Um, and I'm going to just show you one of the reasons, or one of the methods by number lines. But I'm not going to actually use it for you and you'll see why when we start going here so here's a video and I'm just going to play it for you and you can see uh, why, why it actually works out so here we go so using a number line we can model how to divide whole number by a fraction we can illustrate the division of 2 divided by 4 fifths to find out how many 4 fifths are in 2 we divide the interval from 0 to 2 uh, and the number has to be divided into fifths so we're 10 fifths in two. Then we're going to arrange the 10 fifths into groups of four. There are two groups of four fifths. There's two fifths left over. If we look at the number line, two fifths is one half of four fifths. So two divided by four fifths equals two and a half. Similarly, two thirds divided by four can be illustrated on the number line. We start by making two-thirds on the number line. We divide the interval 0 to two-thirds into four equal parts. To determine the answer to two-thirds divided by four, we need to figure out what fraction this interval represents. If we divide the remainder of the number line so that all the intervals are equal, we see that there are six equal intervals from 0 to 1. So each interval is 1 sixth. So, 2 thirds divided by 4 equals 1 sixth. As you can see from this lesson, or from this video, it's complicated. And I really don't want to go into it and actually have you try to do that, simply because, in the end, it's a dead-end method. It doesn't go anywhere. You learn how to use it, and then right after that, we have to go back to a logarithmic method, or sorry, an algorithm method, or a symbolic method like we've got right here. So let's go straight to the symbolic. How do you divide whole numbers and fractions? To do that, we have to talk about reciprocals. The reciprocal of a fraction is a number that is multiplied by to get a product of 1. For example, 2 thirds has a reciprocal of 3 over 2 because 2 thirds times 3 halves, as you can see right here, gives you 6 over 6, which is equal to 1. So these are reciprocals of each other, because when you multiply them, you get 1. Now, 
That can be complicated to think of. So what I need you to think about is something a little more simplistic. All you need to do is make sure that it's in a fraction form, it can't be in a mixed form, and just take the numerator and the denominator and switch their places. So the reciprocal of 4 fifths simply is 5 fourths. And the reciprocal of 3 eighths becomes 8 thirds. And now 5 is a little difficult, a little bit different actually. You have to think about what 5 is. And if you remember, every single whole number in the world has a denominator of 1. We just simply don't show it. So if you have 5 over 1, the reciprocal to this is 1 fifth. Now this is needed because we're obviously going to be doing some reciprocal work in our dividing. So dividing whole numbers and fractions. Any number, any whole number can also be written as a fraction. This is because any number can be divided by 1. This is what we just did in our reciprocal question just a minute ago. This works because the only number you can divide 6 by and not change it is 1, so it works for every whole number. So let's look at division of whole numbers and fractions. We'll try to do it by diagrams first, then hopefully you will see how the, uh, the symbolic, uh, hopefully you see the symbolic method approach appear out of this. So I've got three things, three boxes, and I want to divide them into halves. To do that, I've got to take and divide each one of these boxes up into halves. So there's that divided, that divided, and that divided. So you can see that each individual box has now been halved. So all I'm working with now is halves. I had three, and I've chopped them, put them all into halves. So how many halves are there in this diagram? Well, if you count them, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six in this diagram. So that means that 3 divided by half is equal to 6. If you want to do it in just fraction form and not symbolic, what you have to do is just think about it um, like this. I should say 3 here is in fraction form. Divide that by half. You think back to your numbers, your boxes up here. So 3 over 1 divided by 1 over half is equal to 6. Now we're going to show you how that approaches itself later. Let's take a look at another question. Let's divide 4 by a third. That's on your next page. So obviously, if we had 3 divided by a half and we cut them into halves, to do 4 divided by a third, each one of these four items or four boxes has to be divided into thirds. So they don't have to be perfect, but just roughly into thirds. So each box now has three parts. Now, if I wanted to find out how many thirds there are in this diagram, I want to take all four of these and find out how many thirds do I have. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So that means that there are twelve thirds in this diagram. So four divided by one third is twelve. If you put the whole number in a fraction form, and just think of it this way, you still get twelve. Now, what about 4 divided by 2 thirds? Well, we're going to do the same thing. You're going to take 4, and you're going to divide it into um, 2 thirds this time. So, let's take a look here. I've got to divide 4 into thirds. I think I said divide 4 into 2 thirds, but I meant divide 4 into thirds. But now what you're going to do is you're going to count how many groups of 2 thirds you have here. So I have one set right here. I have another set there. Here's a set. There's a set. There's a set. And there's a set. So how many complete sets of two-thirds do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So how many complete sets do I have? I have six, so four divided by two-thirds is equal to six. Turn the page. Now I want you to take a look at these two side by side and see if you can see something that uh, may give you a shortcut. If you take a look, in each case, the numerator is the result of the multiplication of the numerator of the first fraction by the denomin the numerator I got here. In each case, yeah, by the denominator of the second. Okay, it should be the denominator. I don't know why I fixed that. Okay. So if you take a look at that, three times two is six. And of course, the 1 times 1 gives you this right here. Take a look over on the second one. 4 here multiplies by this denominator to give you 12. And of course, 1 and 1 
gives you one. Now, that's kind of complicated to look at. So let's use our reciprocal idea that we had a moment ago. Okay. So if I have three halves, so three over one, divided by one half, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the second fraction into its reciprocal. So this is going to become 3 over 1 times 2 over 1. Now, we can go back to our work that we did previously with fractions and multiplication. We know that to multiply two fractions, it's the numerator times the numerator over the denominator times the denominator, which means your answer is 6 over 1, or 6. Now, this is a lot easier than drawing boxes. But, of course, if you wish to draw boxes, you can. If you take a look at this, you should have discovered that this works for all fraction division. And it's based on what we call our family of multiplications. Our family of division and multiplying is all linked together. So in symbolic form, if I put it like variables, if I have first numerator over the first denominator divided by c over 1, remember we're working on just whole numbers right now, so that's why we have the c over 1. What happens is the second one here becomes its reciprocal, and then you multiply just like normal. If you happen to have the whole number first, right here, all you do is take the second fraction and you're going to turn it into its reciprocal and then multiply like you did before. So let's do a couple of examples here. I've got 4 over 7. I'm dividing it by 4. The first thing you have to do is change the 4, the second 4, into its, its uh, format with a 1. So this is actually 4 over 1. So I've got 4 sevenths divided by 4 over 1. Now this becomes its reciprocal. So my next step is 4 over 7 times 1 over 4. And of course now it's 4 times 1 over 7 times 4, which gives you 4 over 28. Now of course every fraction can be reduced, so this gives you 1 over 7. You're dividing by 4 in both cases here. What are the whole numbers first? 5 divided by 2 fifths. Well, same thing happens. You take the 5 and you put it over 1, and we're going to be dividing that by 2 fifths. So your second fraction, again, only your second fraction, is going to turn into its reciprocal. So we have 5 over 1 times 5 over 2. This gives me 5 times 5 over 1 times 2, which is 25 over 2. Now, if you want to put this into its mixed fraction form of 2 and uh, 1, sorry, 12 and 1 half, you can do that too. But either one is correct. So in your notes, how do we do um, multiple, sorry, division of fractions? Well, if you put it in your own words, you can do that if you wish. But I'm going to write it down so if you have any concerns, you, you'll get it right. It's quite simple. You're going to keep the first fraction as it is. Don't touch it. You want to make the second fraction Do its reciprocal. Now, this is called flipping it. So flip it upside down. And then what do we do? We multiply. Okay, I want you to pause the recording and I want you to try these two questions, please. 8 divided by 4 fifths and 5 6 divided by 6. All right, let's take a look. First thing, 8 over 1 divided by 4 fifths. Did that? Check. 8 over 1 times its reciprocal. Check. And now 8 times 5 over 1 times 4, which is 40 over 4. Check and check. And now reduce this, and that's 10. That's how your marking is going to be allotted. Now the second one, we're going to do the same thing, except the next one's going to 6 as it's, so 5 over 6, sorry. 6 as it's over 1, just like we had 8 over 1 up here. So now we can do the reciprocal, 5 over 6 times 1 over 6. That gives you 5 times 1 over 6 times 6, which is 5 over 36, which, of course, does not reduce. So, if you have any questions, you go over it again, watch the recording, and if you have any concerns, you come in and talk to me. And we will see you in the next lesson.